Hello again. This is Katherine Dubberly, the Answer Lady. Today I'd like to discuss a way to use a simple chain stitching technique to embellish either side of a knitted fabric. Let's have a look. I have just cast on and knit two rows. I have some weight hanging in it because it makes the matter easier to control. And you can work from any direction. If you prefer to work your tool like this, you can or like this. I think I'm going to work from above and the right because I can stay out of the camera or out of the way of the camera better that way. But it won't make a significant difference to how the eventual trim looks. Starting with my loop, I'm going to be using this extremely funky latch tool. It's very comfortable to use and I show you how to make these in my book um, Cool Tools for Machine Knitters. Now chain loosely around the needle shanks. It's essential that it be loose. Not the easiest thing with this particular yarn because it's bumpy. But cotton yarns, which this is, use this technique extremely effectively. As you know, they don't roll as much as other yarns, or certainly not as acrylic yarns anyway, once they've been washed. And this little extra stability really does the job. Very often this is the only hem treatment you need. Plus it makes a cool textural stripe. And it's a way to use a little bit of leftover yarn. Now the last loop you can hang on the last needle. Now make sure your carriage is set to knit normally back from hold. And let's see how we do. Here we are a few rows down. And you can see how it looks. Now there's another version of this. This stripe is going to show up on the purl side, of course, which we're looking at. Let me hang my weight back and show you putting it on the knit side. All right, we're looking at the purl side, of course. So if I pull the needles forward and chain around the shanks as I just did, our stripe will show up on the purl side. But if I pull the work forward on those needles, there we go. With the work forward on the needles, I'm having to take the weight off because it prevents me from pulling my work forward. If I didn't have the river in place, it really wouldn't be a problem because with the river, the machine's at a slant and it would be flatter if it were not. I had a little trouble setting up the position where I could get to my work and the camera could still see, but I think I've got it now. The work is pulled forward. I had to remove the weights in order to do that. I would have preferred to leave them on, but they kept making the knitting slide back to the base of the needles. And what I'm doing is chaining around the needle shanks very loosely so that the next row won't be difficult, but doing it behind the already existent knitting. That time I did not succeed in making a stitch. There we go. It's a whole lot easier if you don't have a camera tripod sitting here in the way. So don't think that it will always be this difficult. I'm going to move my hand to within the tripod. I hope I don't jostle. Here we go. Better angle for my arm. Oh, I'm standing on my yarn supply. No wonder it feels tight. Just a few more to go. Now in this case, you really can't hang that last stitch. So you have two choices. Remove this stitch, hang the one that's on my latch tool, and then rehang this stitch. Or since I'm in a spot where that would be very awkward, I'm going to chain one more time. That time I wrongly chained around the gate peg. We do not want that, of course. It would cause the knitting to hang up. Now I'm going to break the yarn and pull it through. 
and now as soon as I remove all this stuff that's hanging on I will hang my weights back and knit across all right you can see where I chained and I've knitted since so now let's drop the work off of the machine and have a look at the contrasting stripe okay here's the first one this is on the pearl side and you can see that the two rows knitted prior to the stripe tend to flip to the inside so this can make a sharp edged finish or I could block it to stay out and it will have much more of a tendency to do that once it's been washed and dried now my second stripe shows a little bit from the knit side I mean from the pearl side where we are now but it's much more dramatic from the knit side got a yarn tail into the act let's remove it if you put a knit side chain down near the bottom you can see how it would get in the way of this roll and stop it in fact before I quit let's do that I e-wrapped to cast on I knitted two rows and now I'm going to bring the needles out if you can keep the uh, work that's already on the needles in the hooks that's good last time I pulled it out before thinking but this time I am thinking that will make it just a little bit easier because the hooks will keep control of it for me starting of course with a loop of yarn and chaining behind the needles keeping my chain stitches loose so that the next row will be easy to knit also wherever you use this the fabric will be restricted by the chain stitches so sometimes that can be a good thing if you want it to be stabilized but you need to keep in mind that if it's in an area that should stretch you want it to be able to stretch and loose chain stitches are the ways that allow it to keep stretching again I'm going to break the yarn pull my yarn tail down now I can leave everything forward and knit back from hold position this makes it a little bit easier to knit a stiff row as you probably already know because half of the work is done normally the carriage would bring every needle forward and back and it only has to bring these back so one of the trips through these double loops has already been made by my hand okay here is the hem with the knit side having a chain stitch just two rows above the cast on in case this yarn interests you this is soft ball cotton and I got mine from Country Knitting of Maine and I believe they still have some it's a good deal it's a very expensive yarn really but it was on sale and I think it might still be nice premium sort of worsted weight yarn for bulky machines some mid gauges can use it my artisan mid gauge finds it too thick but studio mid gauges are really a little bulkier than artisans so you can see already how little that edge is curling and once it's washed the tendency will be even less plus it's just a fun design detail that looks a lot more tricky than it actually is now passive knitters you can do this too don't feel left out I've knitted several rows of beige and now I've brought my needles forward and I'm going to chain around the needle shanks just as though I were using any machine we have a little bit less working room than do those with Japanese machines with rivers but you have enough to do it I'm afraid my hand is getting somewhat in your way I'll try to move it out every stitch we have to do an additional step on the pass up machine because as you are of course aware although it knits wonderfully it will not knit back from holding position in fact on the pass up needles all the way out is not a holding position at all so we will just manually knit our first row oops dropped my loop here we go 
passes is the same as the others and that the chain stitches should be adequately loose to knit through easily. But because we'll be doing it by hand, we've got a little more leeway. Now I'm pulling some slack into my yarn and through my feeding eyelet so that I can work with it. And I'm going to knit these stitches one by one back to normal position. Of course, make sure every latch is open. If it isn't, you have to pay attention and flip it like that one. Try to make your stitches very even and try to keep in mind what stitch size you were working at so that this row is not untidy and uneven with the rest. It's surprisingly not that difficult. I normally do it by feel. However, if it makes you nervous, cut yourself a cardboard spacer and stick it back here behind the needle butts so that they bump into it. And that will help you get your stitches the same size every time. It will take a little bit of experimentation to determine what size piece of cardboard you need. But after all, cardboard's a throwaway product. You can fool with it as much as you need to. Now, of course, I'm going to end up with my working yarn still attached to the yarn from the feeder source, but on the wrong side. So all we have to do is set the carriage to GX, untangle any yarn tangles that we have made, and I made quite a few. Looking for GX. Move across gently, return to N. Now I've adjusted this yarn so much there's plenty of slack and I need to manually pull it out. Oops, I need to close my needle beds too. Actually, it will knit with the needle bed dropped, but it knits better in my opinion, properly positioned. Making sure there are no loops in the yarn, across we go. Rows. and bring up the fabric so you can get a look. I had a little bit of weight on this to help control it. And there you go. In case you're interested, this is BB yarn and I was knitting it quite loosely. BB is a tam yarn, a very pretty one, very soft. Uh, it's less expensive than micro tam and very suitable for baby projects but I make it stuff for myself out of it and blankets out of it for anybody I think it's just great there you go pretty isn't it nice embellishment for all kinds of purposes have fun chain stitching all of your stuff happy knitting and bye now